Hello everyone, please take a seat. We will continue with our last session for today. Brauchen gleich noch mal zwei. Okay, aber werden wir hier, äh, am besten hier. hier. Okay, genau. okay, dann ja, ich bin ja, hier immer. Super. Okay, everyone, as you notice, we will do the next session in English. We have wonderful guests here today for the last session. Um, hi, my name is Helene. I'm uh, working as a project lead at the Open Knowledge Foundation in Germany. And I will be your host for the next session. Um, that is called Evidence is Power, Data Literacy in Action. I think at the Data Summit today, you have seen quite many interesting examples and approaches of how to work with data and how um, digital information, once made used and useful, can actually benefit a society. And one can say data can be used as evidence and evidence again is power. But we need the right skills to understand and be able to relate to data and technology. And we need the right knowledge to use digital information in a very critical way. So we need to improve our data literacy skills. But how can civil society organizations actually benefit um, from the use of digital information and how can we actually become more data savvy? And I'm very excited to introduce you to two of our speakers today who are working on these questions for quite a long time already. And they both have something in common. They are part of the steering committee of the International Program School of Data. Uh, that builds and sustains a network of data literacy professionals and practitioners. In 30 member organizations worldwide are part of this network, uh, like France and Macedonia, and also Germany um, with our last project Datenschule. Please come on stage, Sylvia and Badil. Sylvia Frederiksen um, works as a design researcher at Cité du Design um, in saint Etienne in France. And Sylvia will talk about the different approaches to teaching data literacy skills. And Badil Yashari um, works as an executive director at Metamorphosis Foundation, which is an NGO in Macedonia. And Badil will focus on the role of NGOs in promoting open data for accountability and transparency in Macedonia. And we will start with Silvia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Helen. Hello, nice to see you here. Thank you for the invitation. So I will try to speak about uh, the network, but also I will try to focus on uh, French actions uh, that a little bit different than the, the other action of the network. Uh, we are a small group, like 10 people, and we are all uh, dispatched uh, in France, so we are like a network in a network. Uh, and as we are a small group, we are focusing on how to be really close to the people, yeah, and I wanted to, to start with this picture because um, this is really important for me. Uh, I'm really honored to, to speak after the previous presentation 
uh, of uh, dear data because uh, I think our subjects are really closed. Um, this is a picture that has, made, has, has been taken um, during the last streaming, um, the last summer camp. So each, uh, each year, the uh, School of Data Network organizes a summer camp that, uh, that uh, uh, make um, that lets uh, all the members uh, being together do, during two weeks or one week and uh, more and uh, we are making fellowships and uh, we are also making a training session and sharing uh, skills and uh, this picture is one of the picture uh, that been Taking, uh, taken during um, the last one, so it was uh, in Brazil, and uh, it was uh, this image is important because um, we we discussed about the fact that uh, um, School of Data after the, the, the first this first year, the, when we were really uh, uh, we are challenging data and technologies, and uh, now the, the the, uh, the network is focus focusing on human, and it's why we are going to, to it's the way we are going to work uh, with the, in France. So I will uh, speak about the methodology we are using. So we are we are working uh, with the civil society, uh, civil uh, civil servants also, and administration, and we are making. Uh, many uh, data expedition you know uh, i think the data expedition it's one of uh, uh, the network uh, methodology uh, it's a kind of cycle in seven uh, actions uh, and it's let it less it permits to to drive a project from the beginning to the end so we have set seven uh, steps the first step is to define to define uh, the problem and the issues um, that uh, will matter in the in the question in the in the subject. The second one is the idea is to find find the data where uh, in a survey in a portal, and this, the third one is to get so to get the data uh, by crowdsourcing, uh, by uh, scrapping, by download. Uh, then you, you have a step which is to validate the data because even if you have the data, you, you have uh, to check it, uh, check the methodology, the, check the metadata. Uh, then you have to clean the data, to analyze them, and to present them. So it's the, the, that's a, the, these are the seven steps, and this is one of, of uh, example of a project that we are making in France. So we are working uh, in small area in Paris. Uh, we are working in long terms, so we are really close to uh, uh, habitants, and we are trying to, to make a consultation with them, to discuss, and uh, to try to understand uh, who are, what are the problems they have to, to solve. So we have, before starting with work with data, there is a big, big uh, period of talking, and this is really important. Before working with the data, uh, we are starting to focus on the problem. When we have defined the problem, when we started to, uh, to understand if we are looking at the, the problem the good way. For example, here we, work, we have working on uh, um, quality of life. And uh, in this, in this area, the problem of the, the guys was uh, uh, insecurity and violence. Uh, it's in you know, an area in the north of Paris. And um, finally, uh, step by step, we decided not to work on uh, uh, specific problems of uh, insecurity, but we start to, to understand what can improve the quality of life in, in the place and what can make me feel better in my place. So we move the focus from the, problem, the human problem to the quality of life problem. And we made a, a sound level expedition, so with sensors, we try to map all the, the really noisy area, and uh, so we, we made many walk. We use a, an app called Sound City, developed by a lab which is called INRIA uh, in France, and we map uh, all, this, um, all this map 
uh, with this sound level. So all is in uh, open data, and uh, this is one of example of, of uh, one subject uh, we we work uh, with the, the the group, but we are working on many many different sub subjects. For example, the relationship. Uh, with uh, parents and the uh, students, the way parents can involve uh, uh, in the, the, um, the education of their child. And uh, each time uh, we are making new times of discussion and uh, the more we are working in this, this way, the more uh, our partners and the, the, the stakeholders understand that uh, before asking us to, to come with uh, many techniques, many uh, uh, computers, the first uh, work we have to do is to, to create a, a good condition to work together. So th this is uh, really uh, important for us. So, as we wanted to work really close to the people, we decided to develop, uh, as dear da data, many different ways to work without computer. So, this uh, first example is, um, is a, the, called the DataVis card game. It's a card game um, inspired by the DataVis catalog that you should uh, know already. Uh, and um, this is really simple. Uh, you have two kinds of cards. One card with a, a representation a model at the, in the side. At the other side, you have the category that beyond uh, two. Uh, for example, here uh, we have a pie chart, so it's a comparison. Uh, it's a part of a whole. And each card, you have uh, this different function. And the idea of the, the game is to work with a data set. Um, Many subjects can, can be used. We are asking questions, uh, taking from the data set. For example, I want, so here it's a data set about uh, domestic violence. So I want to train the trend in the number of reported cases of domestic violence for the last 10 years. Uh, and uh, the participants try to find the best model to answer to the question. So it's a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a way to make data uh, more accessible uh, from the non-expert people. So this project has been, has been funded uh, by the network, the School of Data Network. This is important to know that uh, each year the network is funding uh, several projects all around the world, uh, radio projects, um, projects in favela in Brazil, etc. etc. And uh, here in France we have also different projects with uh, physicalization and that physical data visualization. For example, this, um, this game, uh, which is developed by a researcher called Samuel Luron, is a designer and uh, he works on, uh, on this uh, that subject of uh, data visualization for non-expert people. So with this, with this uh, game, we are working with uh, Paris City Hall uh, to explain explain how to understand the budget, a uh, city budget, with the participants. So you have uh, some uh, tokens and you can visualize budget. So this is very important because uh, also here uh, it's a, a way to uh, en engage non-experts in a civil society project, for example, the Participatory, participatory budget in Paris. So in Paris, it's a second, the second time we are making a, an open budget like this. The first year, each, uh, the, many of the um, guys, uh, the habitants of Paris who vote for the project, they, they vote a, a, a bad way. There were so many projects, uh, for example, about gardening and social issues where was completely uh, uh, lost and so if uh, people are more able to understand how the budget uh, is made in their own city and if they understand how they can act with this uh, participatory budget with data visualization we're going better and better in the way to collaborate with these institutions. The last one is another project, it's a 
a table um, developed by Pauline Gourlet, uh, researcher in education. It's a, a table made uh, to visualize the activity uh, on, a, on an open space like a fab lab. So each participant uh, come and explain, uh, putting uh, one token, uh, where he is in the space, uh, the, way, uh, the, the way he works, how long he stay in the place. So it's really interesting to understand uh, mutation of the way we are working. And it's, it's also in very, very important because it's, it engages people in the action and in the observation. So that was some examples of methodologies. And the last idea I wanted to, to share with you is the idea that uh, um, step by step we are understanding that um, before making our own project, we're understanding that we, we are really uh, useful uh, in a collaboration situation with, with other NGO. For example, we made a big workshop uh, last year um, with Oxfam on, um, on uh, corruption and we we discovered that uh, they, they made a, a really good uh, uh, report, um, but the, the data set that they made in two years, so really huge uh, work, it was completely impossible to work with because uh, uh, it was completely uh, uh, subjective. Um, it was, uh, well, m many mistakes. So the, we decided to work this way, uh, not to make for the, for the moment our own project, but helping the other that have not the skills to help them uh, to promote open source and good data set that can be used uh, in a long-term project. So this is an overview of French project. Bardil, you want to continue? You have news for us. You have news for us. Bad news, unfortunately. Yes. OK, uh, thank you very much. Um, Helen, thank you. Uh, Sylvia. Uh, I'm uh, Bartil Jashari, the executive director of Metamorphosis Foundation, a proud network of the School of Data. And um, I'm really glad to be here. Uh, although, uh, as I uh, said, um, I'm also concerned and disturbed by, uh, by what happened uh, last night uh, in Macedonia. Uh, I don't know if there was anything on the news here in Germany, but uh, there were protesters who violently entered the, the parliament and attacked members of the parliament and journalists, and um, it was an attempt for lynch and murder, and it was uh, really disturbing. Even one of our colleagues from Metamorphosis Foundation was who was there as a journalist was uh, injured. That's how it's even for me uh, a schizophrenic situation to speak about um, open data, accountability and transparency. While last night we had a clear evidence that in, in my country, uh, um, institutions cannot perform any um, any, uh, any activities that in, is within their mandate and uh, have the competencies according to the law. But nonetheless, that's the situation. Uh, this sad uh, event last night also motivated me to change my presentation. So uh, I, I changed it a little bit, so especially the beginning. And uh, it inspired me to, to speak also about uh, the context in which civil society organizations are functioning. Because although, although all civil society organizations working with open data are working in accountability and transparency, working against corruption, have similar challenges. They share also the same vision and values of openness. And um, uh, challenges that we face on the ground are really different when we're speaking about countries um, like Macedonia. And uh, it's not only about Macedonia, it's the same with the entire Balkan region. With, we share this, this burden of transport transformation from uh, a government which was closed from a culture of secrecy uh, and also from a culture where 
uh, nothing was to be shared. Now we try, uh, as civil society organization, as activists, to transform this government into a more accountable, more transparent government where the governments at all levels in our countries are functioning based on open, um, open governments and good governance principles. And this makes um, our work um, even more, more difficult. Um, and it was also um, this backsliding from democracy is not happening only in Macedonia, also, also, although last night it culminated in my country. It is uh, something that the entire region is sharing, this backsliding from democracy, which can, me, can be identified with a shrinking space for pub public debate, for critical thinking, uh, uh, where uh, data and information about the work of the government is almost inaccessible, where it's very difficult to get those information. And even if, when we get those information, it's often very inaccurate. And in the entire region, we are, we are facing this uh, uh, disconnection between the citizens and the government. Uh, and not only that, trust into government institutions are uh, in, in a very, very uh, low level. The reason why in my country is because institutions are, I would say, occupied by a political party, and these political parties do not um, allow the institutions to, to uh, perform according to the law. And this is also something that was shown last night. Uh, for, for those who don't know, I, I will speak later if you're interested during coffee break. Uh, the majority of the members of the parliament were not allowed to vote for the Speaker of the Parliament and they were not allowed to form the government because the ex-ruling political party occupied all institutions and they were through violence preventing this thing and it's very difficult to speak about accountability and transparency when institutions are occupied. Nonetheless, uh, not only for Macedonia, also in the region we have at least two positive stories. One is the Open Government Partnership, where all countries from the region somehow committed to openness and they, they have to make, to, to show at least some efforts that are, they are committed to, to openness and open their data and uh, uh, foster citizen participation. And the second one is that all countries from the region uh, share, at least for now, this European Union vision. They all want to become one day part of the European Union and in this process they have committed themselves to to make some changes in the way they are governing our countries. And it's on those two positive waves that us civil society organization try to, to surf and, and do some uh, positive change and <clears throat> in, uh, in our countries and make institutions more accountable and more more uh, transparent. Uh, and then speaking ab uh, about open data, open openness, uh, about openness, accountability and transparency, from the perspective of civil society organization in a context uh, like this, is facing a very basic uh, level of um, resistance. And that is the very low level of um, awareness about what is openness, what is open data. And when Several years ago, when starting this cooperation with the School of Data and Open Knowledge Foundation, uh, we noticed that people in Macedonia was not aware at all what is open data and, uh, and what is open governance. So, but even worse in Macedonia, uh, when working with the citizens, we noticed that they don't know, they are not aware that uh, they have the right to hold the government accountable. They even don't know that when the government is spending money, it's spending their money. So this is the basic level of awareness, of awareness that we were facing and that we were trying to, to raise. Saying that uh, when the government is spending money, it's their money. Because in Macedonia and very often in the region, there is this narrative saying that the government provided a gift to your city and they, they provided you buses or they, they built a road. It was like, it's like uh, the government is it providing a, a gift and it's not that it's the money of the citizens and uh, it's, they have to do it. So, uh, what is the role of civil society organization in countries like in Macedonia is that really to work a lot in raising awareness about the importance of accountability and transparency, 
uh, about the benefits that uh, open data and openness bring not only to, to civil society organization, to the businesses, to the academia and to the media, but also to the government and institutions. Because as I said at the beginning, coming from this culture of secrecy, uh, when we were talking to government officials about opening data, it was like they were losing something very precious and that uh, they were losing power. And we were trying to convince them that it's quite the opposite, that by opening data, they will just uh, increase trust toward the institutions and they will probably get uh, elected again. That's how we try to, to raise awareness. Uh, also, what was the role of the civil society organization uh, and what we have done in Macedonia is that we wanted to raise the capacities of NGOs to work with data and also uh, to play this role of a translator. And when I say translation, I mean several things. First, to translate this policy jargon into something which is understandable for the ordinary citizens, and using data visualization, etc., and also to inform and engage citizens. Uh, the, the third thing is also to, to, to perform what they already do, and which is a usual role of uh, NGOs, and that's its, uh, their watchdog role. And um, this is something that using open data, we just provided uh, civil society organization a more important, powerful tool to be more credible and also to, to make their advocacy and pol um, policy making activities uh, based on facts. And why I'm mentioning this? Because in Macedonia, it's in par particularly important because in parallel with this closed society in which we are operating, civil society organization in Macedonia also labeled and uh, uh, labeled by the government propaganda as enemies of the state. And that's why this fact-based policy making is even more important so that there is less opportunities for misinterpretation and uh, specu speculation. So, um, the Civil Society Organization, Metamorphosis Foundation, uh, in particular in Macedonia and also in the region, because we also act regionally through, through various networks, we uh, try to build the capacities of the Civil Society Organization in one hand, but also we create, in the other hand, uh, we, we try to create the offer as well. So it's like we create the, the demand in one hand, so we empower and uh, motivate citizens to ask for information, to hold the government ac accountable, and this, in the other hand, we also try to stimulate the offer. So we work with the government, we build their capacities, we raise their awareness about the infor infor um, importance of openness, so that uh, it, we don't want to create a parallel world where civil society organizations are working on transparency and accountability and the government do not cooperate. We, we work in parallel, although it's very difficult, and um, we try to, um, to, to use those open government principles to promote them, but also uh, we try uh, those principles to be put into, into application through different, different projects. So, um, with the School of Data Network and uh, with the Open Knowledge Foundation, we also provided support to several NGOs in Macedonia to work on very concrete open data projects, on very concrete data products, in order to show what are the benefits. And uh, one of those projects was, for example, to, to, um, to transform the data that were available through an online website for public procurement of the government, to make them available in a more accessible, more understandable way, in a machine-readable format. Because although it was a huge step for Macedonia to, to have online public procurement open to everyone and to see the data. It was not machine readable. It, it was very difficult to filter and to, to make any analyze or to, to do any, uh, to compile any report that would be useful to NGOs or to, to the media. So what we have done, uh, it's still work on pro in progress. It's on openprocurement.mk. We have created this site that is taking the data set and uh, providing different, uh, different report to all interested parties in a way that is also in compliance with open data um, standards. It's machine readable and uh, the API is also available for uh, anyone to use. So this, this is briefly 
the story about uh, Macedonia. And um, as I said at the beginning, um, it's a very diff difficult context, but I, I believe that with a very committed work of the civil society organization and with the support of various international networks who share the same value of openness and freedom and equality, I, I believe that Macedonia at the end will, will be a success story. Thank you. Thank you very much both, um, especially Badil for being here with us today, um, despite the situation in Macedonia. But I think both examples actually really well show how important it is to have access to information um, and how critical it actually is to um, have this access um, for a functioning democracy and a very strong um, civil society as well. So um, thank you both for the very inspiring uh, showcases. If you want to know more about the work of School of Data, uh, please come and see us tomorrow at the Data Clinic session. There will be also um, the game available that Sylvia talked about, so uh, feel free to come by and play with us. Um, if you have questions, further questions, or would like to get in touch with the speakers um, of the conference uh, here uh, at the Data Summit, please join us now for drinks and snacks and, of course, great conversations. Right over there are the drinks. Um, and also, we would like to know how many badges you actually exchanged. Please lift up your arm. Show us your badges. <laughs> Okay, I see quite many happy people, <laughs> which is always a good sign. Um, so tomorrow there will be a riddle, um, so continue to follow our Twitter account, uh, Daten Summit. And as for tomorrow, re registration will start at 10, the program will start at 11, um, so be there in time. We will meet at a new location at Beta House, Prinzenstraße 19, um, it's close to the underground station Moritzplatz. Um, there will be much, learn, much to learn and see. Um, we have uh, great speakers, we have uh, great hands-on workshops planned for you. And um, also there will be a bar camp session. So please join us and share your ideas and uh, your thoughts and projects um, tomorrow. Thank you very much. Be there. We are very much looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.